In the first episode of this series, we looked at artists who explore places and spaces, creating portable sculptures about a home, city or landscape. In this episode, we'll look at some artwork from the exhibition that explores people, communities and cultures. Romyold Hazame is an African artist from a country called Benin. We've displayed seven of his artworks in this exhibition, which are all made from objects that he's found on the streets of his city, Porto Novo. Look carefully at these sculptures. What do you see? What objects can you pick out? What do you think they might represent? Pause the video now and discuss these questions in pairs or groups. Hazame calls these works masks, and they're all portraits of people he's met or seen on the streets of Benin. Masks are really important in African culture. Many communities in Benin, like the Yoruba people, have made masks for centuries, using natural materials like wood to use as part of their ceremonies. Throughout history, lots of masks have been taken from African countries and sold as artwork across the rest of the world. You might have seen one in a museum that you visited. Nowadays, masks aren't used as much in tribal ceremonies, as some parts of these ancient cultures are being lost. Hazame decided to start making masks, but rather than using traditional materials, he uses random objects that he finds in his city, a lot of which is post-consumer waste, rubbish that has been shipped to Africa from other countries in the West, including the UK. Now you know a little more about these artworks, discuss them again in your groups. Why do you think Hazame chose to use rubbish from Western countries rather than new materials to make these portraits? What stories might these objects tell us? Look closely at the details of each mask. Hazame is keen to capture the individual character of the person in his pieces and their tribal heritage. Many tribes in Benin have particular colours and hairstyles that identify their communities. Can you see any parts of the masks that might represent these? Pause the video now to discuss your ideas. Veronica Ryan also makes artwork about her home country and culture. Ryan is a British artist, originally from Montserrat in the Caribbean. The three pieces we have on display are cotton pillowcases, covered in embroidered shapes, letters and patterns. The lumps you can see in the fabric are mango seeds. Ryan makes these pieces while on journeys sat on trains or waiting in airports, and the methods she uses are very similar to what she watched her mother do when she was a child in Montserrat, in a process which was handed down as older generations would turn cotton flower sacks into pillowcases and embroider on them. The mango seeds have a connection to her home country, as mangoes are grown in the Caribbean and exported and sold all over the world. The seeds are sewn into the fabric, wrapped up tightly, and Ryan says that in the right conditions they could sprout and grow into a mango tree. Like Doho Sir, who we looked at in episode 1, Veronica Ryan has moved around a lot and lives in lots of different countries, and she says that this influences her work. So, what do you think about Veronica Ryan's pillowcase piece? Why do you think she chose to put seeds in them? What might the seeds represent? Or what story might they tell? Pause the video now and discuss these questions in pairs or groups. The final piece we'll explore in this episode is by French artist Louise Bourgeois. 
Bourgeois moved to New York in 1938 when she was 27 and had just got married. She really missed her home, friends and family back in France and feared she may never see them again as the Second World War broke out in Europe. She made a series of sculptures to explore these feelings of loneliness and anxiety in her new home, which each represent someone she'd left behind. They're called her personage sculptures, and each one is an abstract representation of a person. And she made them the right height in relation to her body. She created one to represent her brother, and talks about how she would move her portable brother around with her in her new apartment. This sculpture is made from wood. We can see lots of different pieces, of different shapes and sizes, all stacked up on top of each other to create this tall, slim object. So, what do you think about this sculpture and the idea that a sculpture could represent somebody that you miss? Look at the shapes and structure of the piece. Does it remind you of anything? Pause the video now and discuss these questions in pairs or groups. Some people describe the personage pieces, like this one, as totemic, meaning they have similar qualities to a totem pole. Totem poles were huge wooden sculptures created by Native American communities. They were really important spiritual objects that represented animals or spirits. Do you see any similarities? Why might Bourgeois take inspiration from these objects? Bourgeois had an amazing career as an artist, working all of her life into her 80s and 90s. She suffered with mental health issues throughout her life, and much of her work explored her feelings and emotions. She said that art is not about art. Art is about life, and that sums it up. What do you think she means by this? How do you think this quote relates to the three artworks that we've just looked at? Pause the video now to discuss your ideas. Now you could make some artwork inspired by what you've seen today. Perhaps you could make a mask from found objects like Romuald Hazame that represents someone you've met or someone who's important to you. Or you could follow our resource to make a totemic sculpture that represents someone you miss, inspired by the piece by Louise Bourgeois. I hope you've enjoyed exploring these artworks from our exhibition and that they've inspired you to make some artwork about the people who are important in your life. We'd love to see what you make, so ask your teachers to share images of your work with us, or you can share them with us directly on social media.